It's Z Marble. Uh, bringing the news. I'm about to give it to you. Keep it true. Is what I do through and through all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nobody's in here. It's all good. Look, let me go ahead and get this started while I'm messing around. Okay, so check it out. Uh, let me see now. Turn this down a little bit. All right, so look. Let me bring this up. Okay, okay. Quit messing around. Um, so here, let me let me share my screen real quick so we can talk about this uh this situation here with these with these actor knots. Okay. So I'm gonna share the screen over here. Good morning to you, AJ Morningstar. What's up, Chris? Let's see. All right, present to everyone. Let me do that and back over here. Okay, so this is from Fox News. NASA study finds herpes viruses reactivating astronauts. What causes flare ups in space? Let's take a look at this, please. <laughs> now, I was wanting to do like a news story on this, but between uh, wanting to go out and do activism, after work and all that, um, yeah, kind of, kind of pressed for time. So I'm just gonna go live with this one. Okay, so NASA finds study. NASA study finds herpes viruses reactivate in astronauts. What causes flare-ups in space? Of course, we gotta have some imagery here. Okay, uh, NASA has found that at least four herpes viruses reactivate in some astronauts on space flights to the space shuttle and the International Space Station. The International Space Station is pictured, taken by the ST-133, whatever. Okay, let me see. Four human herpes viruses have been found to reactivate in astronauts in on space shuttle and ISS missions. The study published in Frontiers in Microbiology last month found that those viruses were able to flare up because of high levels of stress astronauts undergo during space flight. It also found that the longer the mission, the higher the rates of reactivation. Let's look into this because when did they figure this out? Like, is this a new thing? Astronauts were just coming back from space all the while like, hey, I got herpes. <laughs> what happened? Anyway, uh, though the findings don't show serious danger for current flights, longer missions such as a mission to Mars could be impacted by the potential of the herpes viruses to be developed. Hmm. That's a uh, potential in the future. Uh, let's talk about those future potentials. Here's what NASA's Opportunity rover saw before it lights out. I'm not even going to click on that. NASA astronauts endure weeks or even months exposed to microgravity <sighs> and cosmic radiation. Not to mention the extreme G-forces to take off and re-entry. Well, okay. So look, about these G-forces of takeoff and re-entry, um... Have we had studies that specify that fighter pilots these flare ups? Uh, what about um, you know the the cases where these guys are flying these uh, high speed MIG aircrafts and all that? And uh, I mean, don't they have to deal with extreme G forces on a fairly regular basis? So they're they're going to use extreme G forces as a reason to um justify the uh, herpes outbreak but i guess we have to look into that uh, the physical challenge is compounded by more familiar stressors like social separation confinement and altered sleep wake cycles okay so far the reasons that we have are microgravity cosmic radiation which that's still questionable. That's still up for debate. But the other factors we're blaming for is extreme G forces, stressors like social separation, as if there aren't people who are naturally loners on Earth, not going to space, that haven't got herpes, and altered sleep wake cycles. I have altered sleep wake cycles every weekend. <laughs> and I'm not walking around <laughs> with no herpes outbreak. Um, researchers studied saliva, blood, and urine samples from astronauts before, during, and after space flight. They found stress hormones increased during the journey and dormant viruses resurfaced. Okay. 
so that we're gonna so we're gonna add stresses onto that all right okay there's a lot of stressed out people on earth that do not have herpes so okay scientists found four of eight known human herpes viruses for oral and genital herpes for chicken pox and or sh and shingles or cytomegalovirus cmv and for epstein barr virus ebv cmv and ebv are both known for causing different strains of mono or uh, mononucleosis the kissing disease is what they called it okay might get a little sticky here during space flight there is a rise in secretion of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline which are known to suppress the immune system. In keeping with this, we find that astronauts' immune cells, particularly those that normally suppress and eliminate viruses, become less effective during spaceflight and sometimes for up to 60 days after. Uh, the doctor made a added that 53% of astronauts on shorter space shuttle flights and 61% of astronauts on longer international space station missions had traces of herpes viruses in their saliva and urine samples, which is higher in frequency and quantity than in samples that, uh, from before or after space flight. However, only six astronauts developed actual symptoms from um viral reactivation and even those symptoms were minor the magnitude frequency and duration of viral shedding reactivation and increase uh, all increase with the length of space flight okay so that goes back to the longer the mission the greater the chance of <laughs> them contracting space herpes <laughs> uh the find uh could affect how nasa prepares to send humans deeper into space past the moon and Mars. The ideal, count, ideal countermeasure is vaccination for astronauts. There they go pushing the vaccination agenda again. But this is so far available only against VZV, the virus responsible for chicken pox and shingles. Meta said adding that uh, trials of other herpes virus vaccine show little promise so so our present focus is on developing targeted treatment regimens for individuals suffering the consequences of viral reactivation. Okay, so there is that. Um, let's see now. All right, so let me let me get back over here. Hold up. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for a little bit. Get back over here. I'm gonna read up on this. All right, so going back over this. The reasons that they're giving us for these astronauts' uh, reactivation of herpes, the list that we have here is, okay, microgravity, cosmic radiation, extreme G-forces, which I hit on earlier, like extreme G-forces on takeoff and re-entry. Um, yeah, space herpes. That's a thing. That's a thing now, apparently. Um, so they're blaming it on extreme G forces. <sighs> so I'm thinking that, well, well, no, this isn't this isn't G forces. The these uh, folks who not street racers, but uh, people in NASCAR. <laughs> uh, I don't think they have a uh, space herpes. Um, let me see. I, I don't think uh, the the pilots who fly these, the what the zero G plane, do they do they experience? Do they have herpes outbreaks? What about the um, high speed? Uh, the the people who fly the blackbirds um, on a regular basis, blackbird pilots. Those, those I mean, they experience G forces on a fairly regular basis. Fighter pilots in the Navy, Air Force, and all that. I'm pretty sure they experience G forces fairly regularly. Um, are there studies that show that? they've they they've been experiencing reactivated herpes um uh, outbreaks let's let's look into that one um let me see another thing that they said was the uh all right this physical challenge is compounded by more familiar stressors like social separation let's look into that um there's a lot of people who are separated from society. There's, there's still tribes. There's still tribes in the world. 
<laughs> there's still tribes in the world that are separated from society. So separation from society um, can cause herpes, you say. Um, there's a lot of people who are loners by nature. There are people who live out in the woods by themselves. Um, are there stats that show that they are more uh, <laughs> susceptible to... <laughs> <laughs> Dan Pratt's head. Astro thoughts give you space herpes. <laughs> Astro thoughts. Good lord, man. Good one. Um, but yeah, it is uh okay, social separation. So people just being uh confined out in um, you know, out out in nature by themselves, separated from society. They got they got space herpes now. Is that is that what we're supposed to believe? Uh, altered sleep and wake cycle. When I was in the army, um, there was a pretty pretty stressful period where uh, we soldiers had to endure um, some some altered sleep wake cycles. I've I've known a lot of guys who were in SF or Ranger Bat. And uh, they've had to deal with high stress situations and uh, altered sleep wake cycles. But I hadn't heard a whole lot about Ranger Battalion having to deal with herpes outbreaks. I mean, they're in some pretty stressful situations on a regular basis with the constant field training exercises and all that stuff. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think that's a thing. Um, let me see. Stress hormones. Yeah, so it's all about it's all about stress, G forces, and social separation. Oh yeah, and microgravity and uh, cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation that sounds like about the best uh, best they can come up with as far as uh, something to justify this. But cosmic radiation, not buying it. Not buying it. These other factors that are supposed to be adding to the concept of there being an outbreak of space herpes. Those those are just regular things that people deal with on a on a um, pretty pretty regular basis. Pretty frequently, people deal with stress. Uh, there are there are uh, occupations where people deal with G forces on a fairly regular basis. That they're probably not walking around with herpes all the time. There's people who uh, have altered sleep wake cycles that do not suffer from space herpes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is what's going on right now folks this is this is the new thing this is what's this is what's hot on the straights right now uh space herpes so yeah that's that's actually a thing that's actually a thing right now folks uh good morning miss griffin angie payne mike lewis what's going on i see more people coming through pastor nate what's up uh john pearson what's happening uh king of kong what's happening but yeah, uh, let me see. Yeah, right. Said the herpes comes when you spend some R and R in the city. Yeah, right. You know that that's the. Uh, so what it sounds like is another story of NASA trying to get ahead of the curve in, in uh, another one of these situations. Like we've been saying for a while that. You know, the sun isn't as far away as we've been told and that the moon isn't as far away as we've been told. All right. Nathan Oakley's in the house. What's up, man? Um, So being that we've been saying that about the moon, for example, that the moon isn't 239,000 miles away. We're able to zoom in our cameras as clearly as we can. Any spot any mountain range on earth you know any, any city in the distance and we can get such great detail on the moon it's becoming fairly obvious that the moon isn't that far away so they just move the earth's atmosphere out beyond the moon uh in order to get ahead of the public figuring that part out so perhaps there's a way that we were going to figure out that the there's <laughs> a problem with herpes in the astronaut community and maybe that was going to leak some way or another and perhaps this is NASA's way of trying to get ahead of that exposure <laughs> pun intended uh, getting out to the population what it sounds like is um, in order to keep what what I here and, and let me let me just uh, ponder on this 
what I would imagine is in order to keep the deception going, that the astronauts have to spend a certain amount of time away from society. They have to uh, remain out of hiding or, uh, you know, out of the public eye, away from family and all that, um, you know, just to kind of keep it up. Like uh, you're supposed to be gone on a six month long mission. I mean, you can't be seen in your city for a good six months if people know that's what's going on and the word might get around. So they might uh, be called out on that if, wait, aren't you supposed to be in space? I could see that happening. So I'm thinking that these groups of people have to kind of stay on set to uh, continue the charade. So since they're kind of stuck in close quarters and all that, um, human nature kind of takes over and, you know, they might be, there, there might be a level of fraternization within the astronaut ranks. So it's possible, quite possible that because, <laughs> because those things are going on, because they're away from their families and society and all that, they're stuck in these confines for a while. Perhaps one of those astronauts was um, out on the town partying with one of those astrothots and uh, caught caught some space herpes and uh, brought it back and kind of spread it around the community. Um, and now so many people are starting to figure that out and they're just trying to get ahead of the curve. That's a possibility. I'm just speculating on what could happen realistically. So that whole space thing, well, we know that's a farce uh, as far as the ISS goes and all that. We've seen the CGI glitches. We've seen the harnesses. We've seen people fade out before they go around a corner. Um, you know, we've seen astronauts on these live streams from the International Space Station grabbing at each other's harnesses and all that to try to keep them on balance and all that. We've, we've, we've seen all this stuff. But now... <laughs> uh, so so we all know that the ISS that, that's that's a hoax so now the story is space herpes so there I, I think this is them trying to get ahead of that I don't what, what, what do you all think you know leave, leave something in the chat let me know uh, if um, that that sounds like it might be right if uh, you know put your put your theories out there as far as how this goes uh, maybe maybe a couple jokes it's you know I, I <laughs> thought I'd wake up and do this stream kind of early, but good lord. Um, I mean, even if you think about the the logistics of the International Space Station and how it's set up out there, uh, you see the pictures of the place and you see these wires all over the, the place and, um, you know, you got to think about these people being in these tight confines for months on end. Uh, if they're in zero G, and all that, um, you know, they, they don't have the opportunity to um, swap out the air. You know, they all have to uh, work on their hygiene in these different areas. So it, it's uh, good Lord. Yeah. So space herpes is what we're dealing with these days. Good Lord. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop off of this thing. <laughs> Just wanted to share this article with you. I'll uh, leave leave a link to that article in the uh, in the description for this video so you can check it out yourself. But, yeah, um, spread that around, you know, tag some people and ask them what they think about this recent outbreak of space herpes uh, that we all have to deal with. Um. It's supposed to be a nice day out today here in uh, the Pacific Northwest in my neck of the woods. It looks like it's going to be about 72 degrees, uh, pretty clear sky today. So I'm probably going to go out and do some more activism when I get off work. And uh, yeah, um, continue red pilling in the in the real world. Uh, you know, head to I might head to um, Owen Beach by the waterfront or I might head out to Saltwater State Park, one of those places. Uh, I'll just, you know, try to figure that out. But anyway, I uh, just wanted to give you the update. Space herpes, apparently that's a thing now. As always, be good to each other. Take care of yourself. Stay flat. See you next time. Thank you.